Hi, and welcome to Coding and Legos and Kids, oh my. My name is Marie Hopper, and I'm president of FIRST North Carolina, and with me is... Julia Wagner, program director of FIRST North Carolina. And we're really glad you're joining us for this video. We really wanted to be with you in person so that we could bring the Legos and the tablets and the computers, and you could have a hands-on experience and dive really deep into these programs. Unfortunately, the pandemic had other ideas. So instead you get the Marie and Julia home video show. Extra points if you hear the dog's toenails clicking in the background during some of our pre-recorded videos. So let's just go ahead and get started. FIRST is a program that builds future engineers and computer scientists. In fact, FIRST does more than that. We are a global robotics community that inspires that next generation of innovative problem solvers and critical thinkers. Through the FIRST programs, students learn to code with Lego kits while also developing valuable teamwork and collaboration skills. As I said, ideally we would have been with you in person. Since that is not possible, we will instead take you on a quick tour of FIRST and how our programs engage youth in age appropriate coding and engineering activities. We will explore the why of FIRST. We will then look at the what of FIRST and end with the how. So let's start putting together the puzzle pieces for successfully building engineers in your community and exploring how coding is the key to the future. Why FIRST? Jobs of the future. When doing a quick Google search of the top job trends for the next 10 years, all the lists that we looked at have three things in common. Jobs in healthcare sectors, and we need to remember that healthcare is science, the very first part of STEM. Jobs in engineering and jobs in the software industry, from code developers to cybersecurity, from data analytics to artificial intelligence. And all jobs, whether STEM or not, benefit from an engineering mindset. Students that learn how to think like an engineer, how to problem solve and break down challenges into solvable chunks, students that know how to look at a problem and use an iterative process to finding solutions, these students will be the most successful no matter where their career interests may take them. Engineering and computer science are the jobs that can break the cycle of poverty in our communities. Coding is a common thread in almost any job in the future, and many of these well-paying jobs can be done from almost anywhere as this pandemic has shown us so clearly. And this then allows students to bring back to their home communities good jobs that can contribute to a vibrant local economy. And FIRST works. As we work as a community to prepare young people for a STEM future, FIRST wants to ensure that its programs are having a lasting positive impact on participants across all demographic groups. Our rigorous multi-year longitudinal study conducted by Brandeis University Center for Youth and Communities provides strong evidence that participation in FIRST does just that. What I love about one result from the study that surprised everyone is its stickiness. Even with just one year of FIRST participation, study participants are two to three times more likely to have gains in STEM outcomes than a comparison group of peers not participating. And our students are significantly more likely to show gains in STEM outcomes than comparison students. And the impact is even more profound for our female students and students of color. Equity, diversity, and inclusion is a cornerstone of what FIRST wants to achieve in our world. To help FIRST students continue on their STEM path, we have over $80 million in scholarships available. And these scholarships range from funds to attend a specific university to a specific degree and wide open. And on top of it, 89% of FIRST alumni are actively employed in a STEM field. FIRST has a solid track record of preparing students for success. So what is FIRST? FIRST is a progression of programs for students pre-K to 12th grade. And while it is wonderful if students are able to participate all the way through the programs as they're structured, they are set up so that students can enter at any point and still experience significant impacts. So let's take a look at each of these programs. The first LEGO League program is broken down into three divisions. First LEGO League Discover, First LEGO League Explore, and First LEGO League Challenge. Let's start by diving deep into First LEGO League Discover. First LEGO League Discover is for pre-kindergarten, kindergarten and first grade. It comes with a Discover set and a Discover More set. 
The Discover More set is intended to go home with students so that they can work with their parents and their caregivers to take these concepts home and do some more discovery at home. It also comes with a team meeting guide for the teachers to use to help guide you step by step through the 10 sessions and engineering notebooks for the students to track their learning. It's recommended to use the Lego Steam Park set and the Lego Six Bricks activities. So we're gonna look at how we ignite curiosity and build on habits of learning with a video with Julia. In the first Lego League Discover program, students engage in a yearly theme around real world topics relevant to our growing communities. Last year in the Boomtown Build Challenge, students explored civil and architectural engineering principles as they designed buildings around structural strength, environmentally friendly and accessibility issues. This year in the Playmakers season, students are exploring about being active through play and how to build healthy bodies and minds. In the first Lego League Discover program, students engage with the first, um, the Lego Duplo sets. In this case, it's the Steam Park set with lots of unique gears and pulleys, fun, colorful, decorative elements to help children explore their ideas in the yearly theme. Numbers, colors, and a variety of unique pieces all support that learning for our pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade students. Additionally, what I love about this set is it comes with cards to help seed and inspire ideas with our students. Here we have built one model of a guided card that has lots of gears and helps students to think about moving and cause and reaction, cause and effect of these gears, motions, and system. Another example we want to show you is this ramp we have demonstrated here. Students in a kindergarten class, I had an opportunity to build ramps and explore different ideas with designing different cars and how those different cars roll down the ramp, cause and effect issues again. Another example I also want to share is in a pre-K class, we had an opportunity to observe a teacher or discussed about how she's so excited that students in her class, the English as in second language learners, students had um, got became more open and came out of their shells through the use of this program. They saw that their students were coming together and working closely together as these elements took away that language barrier. Really fun an educational and inspiring set to engage your students in the first Lego League Discover program. Now we would like to demonstrate the Tricky Tower, one of the many Six Bricks activities. In this activity, you'll direct your students to spread out the bricks on the table. Once they have done this, direct them to stack the bricks short end to short end using just one hand. Try to make the tower as high as possible. Let's try this again. In this activity, students are developing fine motor skills as they practice with one hand to build this tall, tricky tower. Ooh. Success! Now, can you do this with your other hand? For this next Six Bricks activity, we're going to demonstrate a peer activity. In this challenge, it's going to really test the children's perspective taking and spatial awareness. That's about our ability to picture in our minds what someone else is seeing in their minds. So for this activity, partner A, that's me, I've built a model, but Julia, my partner, hasn't seen it. And I now have to describe it to her to see if I can get her to build exactly what I've built. So here we go. Okay, turn it around here so that Julia can now face you. You ready, Julia? Ready. Okay. Your dark blue brick is going to be on the bottom. Okay. Take the green brick and turn it in the opposite direction and cover four dots, but leave four dots open. Okay. Now take your light blue brick, turn it the other direction again, and cover four dots. So that two dots are open on one side, two dots are open on the other side, and the middle four are covered up with the blue brick. Okay? Now 
take your yellow brick and your red brick, and they're going to be wings on top of your blue brick. So the yellow brick is going to be on one side, covering up two dots, and the red brick is going to be on the other side, covering up two dots. Okay? And then put the orange brick on top of the red and yellow, so it's covering half the red, half the yellow. Got it. Let's see. Can we build the same thing? Oh, close, but not quite. I didn't give precise enough directions on the green or the blue. So you can see this is a great way to explain about communication and learning better descriptive words and maybe introducing some vocabulary like 90 degrees. This, these are fun. These are really fun. So that's a quick overview of the first LEGO League Discover program. Now we're going to look at first LEGO League Explore, which is for grades two through four. In this program, students focus on fundamentals of engineering as they explore real world problems and they learn to design and code and create unique solutions. This comes with an explore set that changes every year to reflect the yearly theme. It also comes with a team meeting guide and it's recommended to have 12 one hour sessions to cover the entire program. And each student again receives an engineering notebook. It uses the Lego We Do 2.0 set for the hardware and we recommend an iPad or a Mac or a PC or even a Chromebook to use for the coding portions of this. So let's watch as Julia explains more detail about first Lego League Explore. Let's take a look at the We Do 2.0. I have my friend Milo here to help us with our exploration. Taking a closer look inside, you will see there are a variety of bricks, gears, axles, and more unique and colorful Lego elements to help students of all levels develop concrete and tangible understanding of abstract concepts. Underneath the tray, you will find even more, including wheels and hubs, chains, additional elements, our Lego Smart Hub, which serves as the brain of our robot, connected with Bluetooth technology to the hardware you will use to program the robot, a motor, motion sensor, and a tilt sensor. All of these elements engage students in fundamental mechanical engineering principles, as well as building upon their spatial awareness and fine motor skills especially building upon all of they learned coming from the first Lego League Discover program. All right, Milo, let's show our friends more about the We Do 2.0 by looking more at the software. Up in the top right, there are the teacher resources directly embedded in the software, where you provided links directly to Lego education with classroom tips and tricks, teacher guides, some more lesson plans, and additional support outside of the first Lego League Explore program. Coming back to the main page, there are two directions your students can start engaging with building and coding our robots. Classroom projects that are providing engaging lessons guided and open for our students to explore their understanding of the kit, programming, and more. And for those that have already gotten into the sets more, built some robots, or already have projects that are already created, they would start a new project by pressing the green plus, or come back to an existing project that would show up in this area down here. Pro tip, if you come down to existing projects, there's a pencil down here where students can rename their projects or their programs so that they can keep things labeled and organized, or also delete any projects that they no longer want to have or use. Good tips and ways to help students stay organized. We're gonna take a look at the lessons that are provided within. Up top are some getting started lessons that help students really introductory step-by-step -step guide them with using the materials in the kit, as well as very basic programming elements. And as we continue through the Milo series, again, that steps students through their understanding of more complex robot building, integrating sensors, and then collaborating in the end where teams can pair their robots together to 
move them in more challenging ways, like through obstacle courses. As we scroll down outside of the guided projects up top, there are guided projects in science, some open projects in science, guided projects in computational thinking, and open projects around computational thinking. Lots for your students to explore. We're going to check out how our friend Milo got built by going to the Milo the Science Rover lesson. All of these guided lessons are very similar in format with helping their students again learn through this kit and gain confidence as they work. Pictures or video start off which get the students thinking and exploring around their ideas of what they're going to get into within the lesson. As they navigate through, they'll move on to learning about the robot they're going to build. Again, we're going to learn about Milo in this case. And build strict instructions are integrated right in for students to start working together in constructing their robot designs. Step by step, as we scroll through, students work to find pieces, quantity and shapes, and work together to build them. This is a great place to have different roles for your teams of students. We recommend teams of four, but you can also do up to teams of six. Navigators would be a role or position that works with the iPad like I'm doing, navigating through the different steps. You have a role where someone would be a picker or selector. They would look at what object needs to be found and go to the kit to select it. The next role you could have was be a student that works to build or to complete the step in front of them. And the fourth role would be a checker. How well did that student do with putting that piece on? Does it look and match up to the image that they're doing? And they'll quickly see as they move along, if it doesn't match up, that they'll have to work together and explore what isn't working within that. Lots of troubleshooting as they go. Students can stay in these roles the entire time, or they can rotate those roles throughout a build depending on how your students are working together or what you want to work on. So we come to an end. We should see a completed Milo robot. Success. And the software then still continues to guide the students on now what to do next. We want to connect our Milo through that Bluetooth technology with the iPad in this case, or your any hardware you're running the we do technology, prompts us to press the green button to turn our Milo on. And you'll see the Smart Hub pop up and you can choose which one you want to connect to. Another pro tip on this screen, our pencil editor allows us to rename our hubs because in a classroom, you will likely have more than one going at the same time. And that will help you and your students make sure that you are connecting your technology, your tablet in front of you to the current robot that you're working with. Also another great way to check battery life because we don't want our robots dying during the middle of our lesson. So thumbs up, good job, let's keep moving. We're now connected, awesome. And we're gonna come back to our project. Oops, move ahead. And now we're on our programming step. A guide for students to follow along. So this is an image for them to copy. Drag and drop. So we have within the software helping them see what they need to do next. Our green blocks are our motor controls. So let's go ahead and program our Milo. Motor speed, motor direction, how long our motor runs, and our motor stop. For this demonstration, due to the length of table I have for my Milo to run, I am going to slow him down a little bit and that way the camera can also check him out. Before we see how well our code goes, I want to show you real quick on the bottom the additional coding blocks that students will be able to work with. 
green ones again are all functions for controlling the motors so they can control the light and different colors of the light on the, the smart hub red blocks are for controlling sounds and displays ways to integrate numbers their own pictures really cool when you have some fun science projects yellow blocks are our flow controls so programming starts on either a play or a certain keyboard function. We have a wait for and loop function. If we think about our computer science pieces and um, vocabulary to integrate sensor controls for our tilt sensor and our distance sensor. And then our blue here at the end are our um, numeric and text inputs. So this allows students to input their own audio and ways to input output numbers, fun ways of integrating some math challenges in here in a way to randomize in that, which is um, some fun cool activities that you can do with that. So we have our code for our Milo. To make it a little bit more fun, I'm going to have him also play a sound after he goes. And let's see how our program does. Oh, so we saw that our Milo went through the code. We didn't see him really go much because in this case he went backwards. So a simple fix here, we can look at our motor direction and we can change that motor direction to have our Milo go forward instead of backwards. And instead of doing that whole process, the students will then also learn that they can quickly tap that block to control or change that direction. So this is the opposite direction we originally had. And let's see how our Milo does this time. Awesome. So beyond these guided lessons and helping the students get comfortable and comfortable with the programming, they can come up here to the light bulb and there's a two libraries that they can explore a variety of robot builds that focus on different mechanical motions, as well as a coding library or a program library that helps them think about the different programming blocks and their functions. Scrolling down here, looking more closely at our program library, you can see that each of these different paths help them explore more in motor direction or time, our light functions, and really gain a deeper understanding of using these specific blocks. And then they can bring that back to the whole picture as they come back and build and program different models that are looking at different mechanical motions wobble, drive, crank motion, walk, spinning, flexing, and a lot more. All these have build instructions like we saw with the mile built in. And as they step through, these now just have pictures that then challenge the students to abstractly think about how to continue to build these robots. Wonderful, wonderful way to continue to challenge their understanding. Looking at the rest of the toolbar up here, just quickly to see there's ways for students to integrate their own pictures of either their teams or if it's a science project or different work that they're doing, pictures of an engineering notebook, et cetera. Videos can also be integrated. And then ways to bring in other documentation and make it a really fun, exciting program as they learn how to integrate that in their coding. Our last icon on the end here is do, 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 do. a guide that really helps you understand a lot about the software. Great way for you to come through or your students to even have an understanding or a guide about all the different programming blocks, some definitions, etc. Hope you've enjoyed this happy robot building. So that is the first Lego League Explore program. And we were in a workshop just yesterday about the new computer science standards. And people were expressing concern about some of the standards for these grades two through four. And this program hits every one of those standards. 
It introduces everything that you would need to know to say, check the box, we can do the computer science standards. The next program we'll take a look at is the first LEGO League Challenge program. And this is the one that most people are aware of. First LEGO League Challenge program uses two possible versions of robots, the Spike Prime or the EB3. It also comes with a challenge set, which is the pre-printed mat and Lego obstacles that get put on that mat for the robot to interact with. Again, it comes with a team meeting guide to step teachers and coaches right through the program, engineering notebooks for the students, and then a robot game rule book because you can turn this into a competitive team if you like, or you continue to just use it in your classroom. Through friendly in-class competition, students can engage in research, problem solving, coding, and engineering as they work to design and create a robot that navigates the missions of a game. So let's take a deeper look, especially at the coding and the robot part of the Spike Prime set. Welcome to the Spike Prime homepage. On this main page, there are two areas that you would begin with your students unit plans, and building instructions. The building instructions provide a number of different robots, driving bases, assemblies, and mechanisms that help you start learning some mechanical engineering aspects of building and designing a robot with your students. All of these building instructions come with step-by-step -step guidance for your students to use to help them create all these really cool ideas. Legos isn't just about having fun, Going through these step-by-step -step instructions helps students learn about following directions, helps them gain spatial awareness, as well as learn some fine motor skills. Going back to the home page, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into our unit plans. Within the software, there are five different unit plans: Invention Squad, Kickstart a Business, Life Hacks, Competition Ready, and Training Trackers. We're going to dive a little bit more deep into the competition ready, which is a unit specifically created for the first Lego League Challenge program. All unit plans have the same format as shown here. When you look around at each lesson, it helps you understand what level learner that you would be working with, whether it's beginner, intermediate or advanced, and the grade levels that is also appropriate for working through this unit. Lesson plans are embedded through a click. It will take you right to LEGO Education for some extra guidance and support as you prepare your lesson. Helps you learn some tips and tricks for engaging your students, exploring more about the robot in the lesson, doing well about explaining and elaborating more into what they're working on, as well as looking at some evaluation pieces for your students. Tips about igniting a discussion, some videos, tips on building, and most importantly, coding tips to help you feel confident in the work you are doing with supporting your students. Right next here is ability to click right into the student lessons as well as through the software where your students have their own lesson to go along with the materials that you are also provided. Guidance again on the programming, the stacks, understanding what they built, understanding more about the challenge that's integrated, as well as a reflection piece. Lots of great resources. Coming back into our unit plans within the Spike Prime software, we're gonna dive a little deeper into the training camp lesson one. On the right-hand side is a step-by-step -step guidance for your students that helps them really learn from the ground up what they're gonna be doing with their Spike. Videos that help them learn and see Again, built in step by step guidance for any specific robot they need for that unit plan. And then they dive into the programming. Each of these has some guidance to help your students understand what they're looking at. Here we can see in our first dry our programming stack that our drive base that we built when I the play button is pressed. The motors C and D are going to move forward at a speed of 50% and the motor is going to rotate 17.5 centimeters. In addition, when the play button is pressed, it's going to robot will wait for a second, set the gyro, start moving, 
and turn it to 90 degrees. Let's check that out. Additionally, there are also functions that can be done with the robot by pressing the buttons directly on the robot in addition to the play button through the software. In this case, the coding, when the left button is pressed, the robot will wait, move forward for 20 centimeters, then move backwards for centimeters. Let's check that out. Great. And our last code down here is when the robot's right button is pressed, it's gonna wait a second and then move in a turn direction. Awesome. As students progress through the lesson, they then advance their understanding of the programming they just walked through. In this case, they want the students to advance on this programming here to make the robot move around in a square. Hints are suggested throughout to help the students. And then they continue forward with different challenges and a reflection to understand. If they're feeling even more confident into creating their own program outside of the guidance here, they can always return back to the home page and start a brand new project from scratch. Along our left hand side are all of our coding blocks, color coded for your students convenience and hopefully yours. Blue is motors, pink is movement, purple is light, light purple talks about sound, yellow gets into different events, Orange is the controls on the robot. Turquoise is getting into the different sensors available like color, light, distance. Looking at the different operators. And then our darker orange gets into variables and ability of your students to create your own blocks. Let's try one out real quick. Where I'm going to ask my driving base to move forward, turn 90 degrees, and move forward again. So in this case, when I press play, my motors programmed to C and D are gonna move straight for 10 centimeters. I'm gonna adjust so my robot then turns 90 degrees while moving 10 centimeters. And then I'm gonna also have him move straight for another 10 centimeters after that. Part of a square, not a full square, but let's see how it does. Success! Now we'll take a quick look at the EV3 using the same programming code, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the hardware of the EV3 and take a look at how to use sensors. We're now going to take a look at the EV3. You're going to find that there are a lot of similarities between the EV3 and the Spike Prime. Spike Prime just happens to be the newest version. With this EV3, we've built a basic base model, but we've added a third motor and you can see that third motor tucked underneath and attached to that third motor is an arm that we're gonna make move up and down to deliver a ball. We've also added a touch sensor on the other end because we want to demonstrate some coding for the adding a third motor and using a sensor. So let's go over here to the computer and you'll notice that this, the opening screen is very, very similar to the Spike Prime screen. It's got your unit plans, which will have all the lesson plans laid out exactly the same way. And in this case, they called it core set models, which is the mechanical engineering, the building part. We're gonna jump right into a new project to show you the coding when you want to do a third motor or sensors. So let's start with a third motor and let me zoom in here for you. So you always start your code with a block that says when program starts. In this case, we're going to program the robot to move forward, then lower its arm. 
So we're going to tell it to move forward and we're going to make sure to set the motors to A and D. A real quick tip when you're programming, a lot of times your students will write some code, they'll turn it on to make it go and it won't work and they're going to say the robot's broken, it's not working. First thing you should troubleshoot is does your hardware match your software? That is the number one error that we see students make. Making sure that the port that you've plugged in your motor is the same port that you've indicated on your software in your code. So we've set motors A and D to move, and we want them to move forward for two rotations. Now we need to stop moving forward. And now we're going to turn on our third motor, which happens to be in port C. So we're going to set port C. And we're going to tell it to turn clockwise. And instead of rotations now, we're going to change it to degrees. And we want it to move 45 degrees in this case. That's what will lower the arm. Once it's moved that 45 degrees, we tell it to stop moving. And that is now the end of the program. It's important to remember to add end of program because otherwise it'll keep waiting for another command to come along. At that point, you download the program with the download button. It'll land on your EV3. And let's watch what happens when we add a ball to our EV3. Oops, we just dropped the ball on the floor. That happens all the time with our kids. We're gonna add the ball to the EV3. And we are going to dance around here so that we can turn on the program. Dropped the ball onto the floor for us. Great. So that's how you would add a third motor into your coding. So now we're going to show you an example of coding a sensor. In this case, we're going to use a touch sensor, but the principle is the same no matter what sensor you're using. Once again, you want to start with your when the program starts icon. And in this case, we're going to tell the robot which motors, again, a and D for our particular robot. In this case, though, we just want them to start moving. This is a little bit different because we're not telling them to move to a certain number of rotations or degrees. We just want them to start moving. So we add two start motor motions. And in this case, we know already that we want them counterclockwise because that's the direction we want the robot to move. And one will be motor A and one will be motor D. Then we're gonna tell it to wait for. We want it to move until something happens. So it's going to wait for something to happen. In this case, it's gonna wait for something to be pressed. This sensor in this case is on port, hmm, I can't remember, port four. four. So we're gonna have it in port four. When port four is pressed, then our motors are going to turn back on and we're gonna move it in the opposite direction for two rotations. And then we're going to say end of program. So once we've got all our code in place, then we go ahead and download it to the robot. And let's see what happens when we run that program for the robot. So let's run that one more time to capture it a little bit better on the camera. Forward, it touched the wall and it moved backwards. So using sensors is really a very great, a good skill for our students to learn. And it really starts to pull in a lot of the computer science learning for our students. And so that's an example of using the EV3. So one other part of the First Lego League Challenge Program is a research component where students will pick a, pro a problem on the topic of the year and then do some research to come up with their own unique solutions to it. It's a really powerful part of the program and something that I encourage you to look at more deeply. So now we're gonna go back out of first Lego league in the three divisions and very quickly, because we want you to have the full progression is to understand a little bit more about the first tech challenge program. This is now for grades seven through 12 and students are building robots about the size of a microwave oven. They're no longer using Legos, but they are using 
all of the same mechanical ideas that they learned through the Legos. They're also expanding their computer co coding knowledge now to use lots of things. And this is where you can now introduce some Java-based programming as well as other programming languages. Included with the class pack are student activities and again, teacher lesson plans and a digital engineering notebook. And it uses the Rev Robotics Education Kit. And this kit, like all of the Lego kits, can be reused from year to year. If you'd like more information about the First Tech Challenge Program, we encourage you to reach out to us and we can give you more information. And then the final program in the first series of programs is the first robotics competition. This is now big robots, big kids. This is for high school, grades nine through 12. And they have a very tight time frame with limited resources to build robots that are the size of a small mini fridge. They're usually around 125 pounds, five feet by five feet by five feet, expandable, very big teams building very big robots. In fact, we encourage these students to set up their team like a small business. And so team sizes will range from 12 to a high of 80. And you can have lots of different departments for your students to learn everything that wraps around STEM careers and the STEM field. Um, Next slide is that all of these programs are aligned with standard alignments. They have been matched to the Common Core, Next Gen of Science Standards, the CTSA. Um, all of this stuff aligns with what North Carolina needs to do. And especially we're aligned with the new computer science Pro, um, standards. And so our skills can progress all the way through so that they know how to meet not only their learning standards, but really be job and career ready. So how do you engage in the first programs? We're gonna go back to our slide. There we go, back to putting the final piece of the puzzle in. You can engage either through class packs or through teams. Class packs are available for all of the first LEGO League division programs, as well as the first tech challenge programs. And the materials are bundled for up to 30 students. Um, and they support in-house activities and events. These are intended to help us achieve equity of access for all of our students by making it a part of your classroom schedule and day. And because they meet the standards alignments, it's very easy for these programs to make your learning come alive for your students. The other way is as an after-school program or a club activity where you can have a team and First Lego League Explorer, that's limited to six students per team. First Lego League Challenge is teams of up to 10. First Tech Challenge is for teams of 15. And First Robotics Competition is an unlimited size for your team. And with those teams, you can now qualify to participate in official first competitions and events. For any of these programs, class packs or teams, we want you to know that there is professional development available for educators. And the best part about professional development offered by FIRST North Carolina is that it is free. We are more than happy to come into your school, into your classroom and spend several hours with you so that you feel really comfortable and confident engaging with your students through these programs. First at Home is another chance for bringing some of these programs into our virtual um, world. So Julie is going to explain a little bit more about the First at Home program. The First at Home page provides a number of free resources and activities to support student learning in the variety of learning environments that currently exist. As we scroll down, there are a number of topics and when you click on each of the offerings or topics, there are links and downloads that help support, again, your students' learning. We have resources around remote learning, free and flexible pre-K through 12 STEM activities. And I'll talk to you a little bit more here in a minute about what happens when you click that link. Activities around core values, engineering design, research, and career exploration activities to support coding and programming and a little bit on AI. Specifically, I wanna point out about the Scratch link here. Scratch is a language very similar to as we saw in that Spike Prime video and EV3. It is also compatible with the WeDo 2.0 for your advanced learners of those grade levels. 
much a uh, bunch of other resources again too depending on the level of learners you are working with computer aided design resources or cad specifically i wanted to point out about the autodesk tinkercad which is great for ages as low as seven and up and autodesk tinkercad also dives a little bit deeper into the robot design with looking at the circuits and the electronics but all of these from Onshape, Autodesk, SolidWorks are all great software programs for understanding and designing and building robots without worrying about all the materials and tools at the moment. And finally, we have a category for STEM and CTE resources, which is compiled a bunch of links and resources from friends and partners. Again, giving you some more tools in your toolbox to work with your students this year and beyond. So I said we'd look a little bit closer if you click that link to access the pre-K through 12 STEM activities that FIRST Education has put together. Once you gain access and scroll down here, you will see that all of our um, grades have been broken down into subgroups. So in this first case, we're looking at our pre-K through one subgroup. Every subgroup has 12 sessions. Every session has a Different topic, but overall we're looking around six main topics as they go through these 12 sessions. Core values, the first core values are integrated throughout. So looking at our discovery, innovation, inclusion, impact, teamwork, and fun through those first core values. Coding and programming concepts, um, having students think about design or CAD to show solutions to problems students exploring physical components of robots through simple machines. We have students looking at electronics and mechanisms and mechanics, through design again, engineering design challenges, and finally culminating activities to put all together what they've been learning throughout these different sessions. As I've been scrolling down, hopefully you'll see we've got our groups or our grades broken down. And our last group is for our high schoolers or middles to high school, seven through 12. Every group also has getting started guides and parent guides, which provide you tips and tricks to support you, your parents, to make sure that our students are getting the best education they can. We click on one of the lessons or sessions to look a little bit more closely at what those look like. In this case, I'm looking at a first Lego League Explore level for our second through fourth grade, a session 12 or a culminating activity, building a model chair or prototyping a model chair. Recommended grade level for this is four plus, but all of our activities follow the same format where they're provided an activity summary, outcomes for this activity, relevance in the different areas of education that we focus on with our students science math literacy social studies and of course computer science and bringing in our core values as well again the key vocabulary that is addressed in the activities materials and supplies that are needed and for all these activities everything should hopefully be something accessible to our students at home Guidance for our teachers and our parents. Outcomes and actions for our students and how we could take our lesson even further. An evaluation rubric is provided. There's some grading nature needed for the activity. And as we continue to scroll down, you'll start to see the materials that are provided for the student. So this would be information about the problem that is provided for this particular activity, having them think about different criteria and constraints like our engineers do in their daily jobs, reviewing our engineering design process, and then worksheets to help them guide through that process and their thinking as they create, test, design, prototype their chair, sharing our designs with others, getting ready to present and reflection questions for them to think about their work. Of course, we always want to take it further when we have time. And there's a core value self reflection for our students to reflect on how they thought about discovery, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork and fun throughout these activities. 
when you have some time, we encourage you to explore a little bit deeper at firstinspires.org backslash community backslash home dash learning to see how great these resources are to support you and your students. Enjoy. So thank you, Julia, for those, that tour. And if you'd like to go deeper, please feel free to reach out to us or to go to straight to the firstinspires.org and look for their first at home activities. So to wrap up our coding Legos and kids, oh my, Julia, if we could go to our final slide. Um, we're here to support you. We want you to email us at info at firstnorthcarolina.org, find us on the web, and stay connected with us through Facebook and Twitter. And most of all, Julie and I want to take this time to say thank you. We know that right now is one of the most challenging times that teachers have ever had to encounter. And so I want to personally say Thank you so much for all that you're doing to keep our students engaged and excited about STEM. And we're really, really grateful for all that you're doing. If you'd like to learn more about FIRST and our programs, please reach out to us. And you can receive a CEU credit for watching this session. And we invite you to please fill out the evaluation here on the screen at the bit.ly dot ly k12 engineering s9. Um, that will get you your credit and we'd love your feedback on if this video was helpful and thank you for all that you do and have a great rest of your day. Bye.